November 30th, 2013. Actor Paul Walker, a massive star of the Fast and Furious franchise, died in a car accident in Santa Clarita, California. Paul Walker's car caught fire after it crashed into a tree on an empty road in absolutely perfect weather conditions. So why did it happen? In this episode, we're going to go back to the fall of 2013 to discover the real circumstances of Paul Walker's death. Throughout his life, Paul was a car enthusiast. After the Fast and Furious franchise became a major success at the box office, Walker started his car collection, which grew to 30 cars and included BMW M3s, Nissan Skyline GTR, Ford Mustang, and many other high-performance vehicles. Was he even driving them? Oh yeah. Paul Walker wasn't just a street racer from the TV show. He was actually a competing pro-level racer in real life, with sponsorship contracts from Etnies, Brembo, Hankook, to name a few. However, the need for speed wasn't the only thing that was capturing Paul's mind at the time. Having achieved financial success, Paul was keen on giving back to the world. In 2010, after the devastating earthquake in Haiti, he organized a Reach Out Worldwide Foundation to help communities across the globe recover after natural disasters. On November 30th, 2013, Paul Walker and his foundation organized a charity event for the victims of Typhoon Haiyan, one of the most powerful tropical cyclones ever recorded. After the event was over, and minutes before the tragedy, Paul and one of his good buddies, Roger Rodas, jumped into the 2005 Porsche Carrera GT supercar and drove away with Rodas behind the wheel and Walker in the passenger seat. From Alta Vista Avenue, they made a right turn on Constellation Road, then another right turn on Kelly Johnson Parkway. Disregarding the speed limit of 45 miles per hour, Red Porsche starts picking up the speed rapidly on a seemingly straight and empty street. Going at around 100 miles per hour, they're quickly approaching a curve, and Rodas starts turning the steering wheel to the right while applying the brakes and switching to a lower gear. Now, what they didn't know was that the other day it had rained heavily in this area, and even though the afternoon LA sun had almost dried the road, the residual moisture is still on the asphalt playing on the devil's side against Walker and Rodas. What was also against them were Porsche's tires. See, people don't drive supercars every day, but when they do, they tend to put them through their paces. Fast maneuvers, abrupt braking, and acceleration wear out the tires quickly. On this particular car, one of many in his collection, Rodas hadn't replaced the tires in years. When Rodas and Walker needed the tight grip between the wheels and the road, they simply didn't have it. At the end of the curve, the Porsche started skidding, and somewhere around that spot, the driver lost control of the vehicle as it slid from the road to the sidewalk hit the light post, and then crashed into a tree that almost cut it in half. For over a minute, there was still a chance to save at least one of the passengers. The coroner's office reported that Paul was still alive after the impact, but it was such a coincidence that no one was around. The road was empty. The wrecked car picked up the fire 90 seconds after the crash, and the rest is history. The results of the investigation by the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department and California Highway Patrol were released in March 2013 and concluded that it was the unsafe speed that caused the crash. That investigation was aided by engineers from Porsche who evaluated the wreckage of the car. To this day, the spot where the crash happened is the place where fans pay tribute to the Fast and Furious star, whose untimely passing was too similar to James Dean's. But that's another story. As for Paul Walker's deadly car crash, this is how it was. All right, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you won't miss new episodes.